Okay, hello there everybody, here comes your warm-up. ka -chow. For reasons you'd rather not get into, you need three tons of beans, and you need it by tomorrow night at 8 p.m. You can buy beans in the following cans. $2 for 28 ounces, $1.79 for 16 ounces, and $3.99 for 55 ounces. What's the best deal, and how can you be sure? Pause the video, get on this, and let's see how it goes. Okay, everybody, can I get you back up here in five, four, three, two, one. Let's see here. Copy that. Go in here. Make a new one of those. Change that back to quarter inch. Hit OK. Unfreeze the screen. Paste this. Say everything I'm doing. All right. Hey, you guys did an awesome job talking to each other about that. I think you guys wait. Deserve a point. Thanks so much, everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay, here we go. So we've got three cans of beans. Now, we're actually going to get more into this when we talk about percentages. But the truth is, guys, did you know that there's an entire industry that's basically based on people being in a rush when they're online shopping and not looking at prices? Like, basically, guys, if you were in a rush and you were really worried about getting all these beans on time, which of these cans do you assume is the best deal? Just say it. Which one do you think is? You assume it's the biggest one, right? The biggest one has to be the best deal because that's just the way things usually go. But let's see if that's really what happened. Let's see here. Boy, getting all those empty seats out of the way. Here we go. Let's see here. Maya, what is, what, how did you find out? Well, first of all, which of these do you think is actually the best deal? Sure. So you did $2.00 divided by 28 ounces. And what did that get you as a unit rate? 0 0.071, so 7.1 uh, cents per ounce, really. So 0 0.071 dollars per ounce. Okay, how about for this guy over here, the 16 can, the 16 ounce can? Because 1.79 divided by 16, and that's dollars and ounces. And that was, what was it? Zero point what? One, one, one dollars per ounce. And then the big one? 399.99 dollars divided by 55 ounces. And what did you get here? Seven, two dollars per ounce. So, what, now that we've got all these, which one do you think is actually the best deal? The 28-ounce can. Yeah, the 28-ounce can. Because it's on sale. Right? That makes, it, that, uh, that makes it work. I don't know, how many of you, when you're shopping with your parents, you see your parents do that? Like, where they're walking through, they have their basket, and then they, like, put the basket down and lean way in to look at the tag to see how much it is per ounce. How many of us have parents that do that? Okay, I'm glad it's not just me. Yeah, I always do this. I'm like... Okay, so we got the family size, which is this much, and then the regular size, which is that much, but it's on sale, so its amount per ounce is actually 0.05 cents less than this. So I'm going to get two boxes of this, and then instead of the one box of the family size, and then I go home, and the missus is like, why did you buy two boxes of waffles? Like, now it takes up a weird amount of space in our freezer. And I'm like, because I saved us, like, three cents. <laughs> and pride. <laughs> go ahead. Absolutely. Yeah. I do the same thing. I completely do the same thing. I always do that. I always do that. All right, let's get to it, guys. It is the 59th day of school, guys. You know that 59 takes more steps, three to be exact, to reach a palindrome through the reverse and add sequence than any whole number before it. Allow me to show you what I mean. If we take 59 and then we put it through the reverse and add sequence. What I'm saying is we're going to do 59 plus 95. Do you see what I did there? I'm going to get my calculator. Oh, it was already open. Okay. Oh, that's right, because I didn't shut down my computer yesterday. So 59 plus 95, I'm sorry, is 154. Now I'm going to take 154 and add it to, what do you guys think? 451. 451. Right? Reverse and add. 154 plus 451, 
605. So now I'm going to take 605 and add it to what? 506, which is 1,111. Somebody give me a whole number less than 59, and I'll show you that this happens before three steps. Just someone say it. 17. So we're going to do 17 plus 71, which is uh, 88 the end. Just 88 the end. Give me another one. 43? 43 plus 34. Oh, you guys are giving me easy ones. That's 77. The end. I'm done. See, you know what? I, I, how about this? Give me something that ends in an 8. Let's make it interesting. 28. Uh, 28 is good. 28 plus 82 is... Ooh. 28 plus 82 is 110. So I would do 110 plus, well, I guess 11, right? If I reversed it, there's a zero in the hundreds place, which would make it 121, and that's a palindrome. The same backwards as forwards, right? One, two, one, one, two, one. Kind of cool, right? So it took two steps. That one took two steps. Um, it's actually National OR Nurses Day, operating room nurses. Anybody have an operating room nurse in their family? Yeah, yeah. Oh, who is it, George? Your great aunt is an operating room nurse. That's awesome. Tell her happy operating nurses, operating room nurses. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have an uh, aunt. An aunt that's an operating room nurse. Well, there you go. Today is her day. So just like send her a text or something. Just be like, hey, happy operating room nurses day. Just thinking about you, auntie nurse. All right. Let's see here. What is our first essential question? I would love to get that from Isla. Yeah. Can we practice? Calculating unit rates. We sure can. By the way, Jeopardy ends in eyes. Being made suddenly aware of something or finally getting something like a dream. Realize is correct, right? Like you realize your dream. Uh, and road signs, crosswalk slash pedestrian crossing, those are not specific enough. That is a specific Road sign. What is it, Kale? School, school crossing is what we're looking for. School crossing, that's right. Which, I don't know about you, the school crossing always makes it look like the girl in that thing is getting kidnapped. <laughs> Am I wrong? That yeah, that's always what it looks like. It's like the guy is behind her, holding her by the arm, being like, you're going to school. <laughs> like, I don't know. It all looks very alarming. They ought to, they ought to modernize that sign. <laughs> it all comes out... I, <laughs> I think that's ready for a. Tw I think that's ready for a 2023 redo. What do you guys think? Yeah. It's kind of like, um, like the uh, like the handicap parking sign. Like I don't know if you guys have noticed they made it so like it's like cool now. You know what I'm talking about? They tried to, like but the state don't like it and the government doesn't like it, so they're trying. Oh, you see it like people can't get there. Oh really? And then the, the state government. Oh, they just want the what? I thought that was official. That makes me sad. I like the cool new one where he's like, where he's like, he's going places. You know what I mean? Like, I know it is cool. Like, why would they want it? Anyway, you know what? Go figure. <laughs> of course, they want it to be less cool. Uh, what's that? So the new one, like, so the old one's the guy just sitting in a wheelchair, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And the new one, he was like, had his arms and he was like going somewhere. Like, he was like in motion. It looked like he was going fast. It was cool. Anyway, yeah, you can, but not on my time. All right, so, got a pencil? Absolutely. Unit rate practice. Unit rate practice. So remember, unit rate is how much is this happening per this other thing, right? Like, how much is, how many ounces per dollar? How many dollars per ounce? How many calculators per chicken head, right? Like all these, right? All this, that's a per, like, it's all about that per one unit. So let's go ahead and see if we can make some sense of some of these. It's true. It's in there. It's in there. Don't you worry about it. It's in there. Okay, here we go. So unit rates is what I wanted to talk to you about today. So here we go. Pulled over. <laughs> Maya is pulled over by a police officer for, yes, underage driving, but also speeding. <laughs> also speeding. 
Well, let's find out. The police officer says that she was speeding in a 75 mile per hour zone, but Maya says that's impossible. She'd been driving the same speed on that road for six and a half hours and has only made it 507 miles. So, how, how was she in fact speeding? If she's been going the same speed on a road for six and a half hours and has made it 507 miles, <coughs> was she speeding in a 75 mile per hour zone? Give it a try and teach. I don't know what neighborhood has a 75 mile per hour speed limit. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be crazy. That's, all, that's some Orlando stuff. Okay, so she's going 6.5 hours and was good, traveled 507 miles. Okay, let's see here. Can I get you back in five, four, three, two, one? Ross, was Maya speeding? How did you know? What did you do? So 507 miles divided by 6.5 hours. And if you do 507 divided by 6.5, you get... 78 and specifically 78 miles per hour how many of us got 78 miles per hour for that you know maya that's within five miles per hour though so i'll bet you can contest it <laughs> you should be fined that's what they're doing <laughs> oh, 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 oh i see i was gonna say maya that's what they do that's very what an outstanding citizen you are, though, to be like, officer, I deserve to be fined. <laughs> I see what you mean. Yeah, Hugh. Wasn't she going like 507 feet? Oh, oh, sure. But I just, I just put that picture there because it's funny, right? Right, because you're not going to get pulled over for underage driving for one of those either. That would be crazy, right? Unless you're on like a freeway. All right. Cool fruit stand, dude. Uh, but how do I get to the green apples? <laughs> like, this is a beautiful setup. What if I want green apples? <laughs> what do I do? Anyway, you climb a mountain of fruit to retrieve 9.5 pounds of those apples. Make a huge mess doing it, by the way. Once you dig your way out of the fallen fruit that results, you pay for the apples and leave in a rush because the, the, the stand owner is really mad. You walk away looking at the receipt. You paid $15.96 for all those apples. How much were they per pound? How much were those apples per pound? Give it a shot, and here we go. Sorry about the fruit stand. Teach. I really just want one of those pineapples, sir. <laughs> like, oh yeah, there's like a little watermelons over there. I didn't even notice the watermelons. Good eye. Are there peaches? So I see pears. I think those are strawberries, grapes, oranges. I think those are. Those are cherries, other grapes, grapes, oranges, plums. I think those are peaches there. Peaches and or nectarines up and down. Or maybe white and yellow peaches. Well, you're right. I don't think those are grapes. I don't know what the heck those things are. Tomatillos? I don't know. Anyway, let's see. Let me write these down. 1596 for 9.5 pounds. So it's $15.96 for 9.5 pounds. All right. 
Well, all right. Can I get y'all up here in five, four, three, two, one? All right, folks. Let's go ahead. Right, we've got Texas accent coming up on yonder. Let's see if I can get a little help out there. All right, David. So how are we going to find out how many, uh, how much fruit this is, these apples cost per pound? 15.96 dollars. Yep. Divided by 9.5 pounds. Yep, yep. And then what's that going to be? $1.68 dollars 1 per pound. How many of us got $1.68 dollars per pound? I tell you what, if my granddaddy, if he knew we were paying $1.68 dollars per pound for green apples, Granny Smith, are you kidding me? Shoot. <laughs> Come on, man. That's, a, that's a, a high price for apples there. I mean, what? I mean, they ain't Honeycrisp. Of course, the Honeycrisp has recently come down in price. I don't know if you guys have noticed this on account of, what well, I think, the, the sugar bee. That's the apple. It's kind of like the apple right now. I feel like these apples just come in waves. You know what I mean? Well, like, what are you guys' favorite apples? Come on now. Granny Smith. Granny Smith. I, a little sour for me. You can't eat apples. Why can't you eat Oh, because you got braces. That'll do it for sure. You get those skins in there. Can you skin it and then eat it? To skin? <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to be like... I got you, I got you, I got you. Sure, sure, sure. That's sad. Apples are great. I love apples. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Caramel, caramel apples, absolutely. I'll tell you, my favorite's those pink ladies. You know what I'm talking about? Or, well, actually, my real favorite is, uh, what are those called? I think those are, they're, they're called, like, something rose, where, like, they're green on the outside, but the inside's pink. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, those are real good. They're kind of sour. I like those sour apples. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Daphne. I still eat apples, even though I'm technically not supposed to. Oh, Olivia disapproves. What's that? Fuji's? Fuji's are good. You can, dude, Fuji's are great because they're not too expensive. They're like real inexpensive. If you like Fuji's, you can get tons of them. Anyway, let's see here, guys. We got a couple more of these guys for here before we get started on this. Okay, here we go. Oh, hey, how about this? What would y'all pay for 8.9 pounds of apples then? What have you got? Well, if it's $1.69 per pound, how much is it going to cost for 8.9 pounds? Give it a shot and teach. $1.68? No, ahead. Was it $1.60? Oh, I said, uh, did I say 60 Oh, it's probably because I'm so used to those ending with a nine. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see here. 8.6 pounds, yep. All right, can I get y'all back up here in five, four, three, two, one? All right. Hey, you guys are doing pretty good out there. Can I get a big Texas yeehaw from you guys? Yeah. All right, woohoo! Rootin' tootin'. Aditri, what you gonna do with this $1.68 1, $1. per pound to find out how much you're gonna pay for uh, 8.9 pounds of apples? Uh, and that's dollars per pound divided by 8.9 pounds. So I'm going to deal with this in a second. I want to take care of the units and see what happens here. So if you have dollars per pound times uh, 1 over, well, that would be, uh, right, because that's pound over 1, 1 over pound. Yeah, well, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Hang on, because that would be, Divided by pounds over one, uh-oh, that would be dollars per pound times one over pound. I'm a little worried about this. That's dollars per pound squared. That's a little alarming. That's a little alarming, but that's okay. Sometimes the units can help us understand that, right? The units are showing us that that would be dollars per pound squared, which I don't know what that even means. But if you actually look at the numbers, you're going to see that something's wrong here. 1.68 divided by 8.9. 1.68 divided by 8.9. So, Aditri, if it is $1.68 per pound, and you're buying eight and a, eight, eight, almost nine pounds of the stuff, 
it says you're only going to be charged about 19 cents. Does that make sense? Well, I guess it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. You know, Y'all know what I'm talking about. So this, these two answers are telling us that was the wrong process. So what else could we try, Dietrich? Okay, well, look we'll at what guys, it's all right. Let's just find out. Wow, it turned Australian there for a second. <laughs> let's try it. Let's try it. 8.9 pounds divided by 1.68 pounds per dollar, or sorry, dollars per pound. Okay, and let's see what happens here. So I'm going to deal with this in a minute. Pounds over dollars per pound, that would be pounds over one times... Uh oh, pounds over dollars, which is pounds squared over dollars. So already that's kind of that's kind of not making sense to me, right? Like that unit right there, it's kind of not not too great. But let's see, what we get 8.9 divided by 1.68. That number is going to give us a clue too. 8.9 divided by 1.68. That does seem more reasonable, right? That it's better than 19 cents. You know you're not going to pay 19 cents. But a tree, tree, I'd say if you're buying 8.9 pounds of these apples and it's a buck 68 per pound, you ain't spending nine five thirty either, because that's less than a dollar per pound, right? So let's see here. What is one other thing we could try? If division didn't work out, what do you think might? Let's try to multiply them. Let's try to multiply them. So if you do 1.68 dollars per pound times 8.9 pounds now we're talking the pounds are going to divide out leaving behind dollars is that what we wanted as our unit is that what we wanted as our unit dollars go yeah. yep so 1.68 times 8.9 that's about 14.95 14.95 dollars give or take how many of us got something in the neighborhood of that or see how we got that in our two arm? You guys okay out there? Cool. Aditra, I think you were thinking of how to solve this next one. What if you had a $10 bill? How many pounds of apples can you buy? Try your method now, Aditra, and I think that's what happened there. Is you got the dollars, dollars to pounds versus pounds to dollar. So give it a try. See what happens here and teach. <coughs> Let's see what's coming up next. Is it Basilisk? No, we don't. We don't do that one. We don't do that one. Yeah, we'll do that one. We'll do that one. Actually, uh, who am I kidding? Okay. Can I get y'all back up here in five, four? Three, two, one. Okay, let's go, guys. <coughs> Ethan, what are we going to do to make this happen? Yeah. Right, if you do $10 divided by $1.68 per pound, look at what happens here, y'all. If we do dollars over one times pounds per dollar, the dollars are gonna eliminate leaving only pounds, which is the unit that I wanted, right? That kind of gives you a hint. So 10 divided by 1.68, it's not a very nice number, but that's okay. About 5.95 pounds, let's call it about 5.95 pounds. About 5.95 pounds. How many of us are able to get 5.95 pounds out of that? Cool. Excellent work, everybody. Okay, let's see here. I got one more example for you before we see if we can crack into that uh, a little bit. Let's talk about a basilisk lizard. The basilisk lizard is a creature that can run fast enough and is light enough that it can run over water. That is pretty cool. How many of us think these things are pretty cool? I think that's pretty cool. Anyway, it turns out a basilisk can run about 14 and 3 tenths meters in six and a half seconds. How far can it run in 20 seconds? So give me a unit rate and see if you can use that to find out how far it can run in 20 seconds. Give it a shot 
And here we go. Woo! Look at that critter go. Teach. Whoa! Look at that critter go. Whoa! He's just hossing right over that water. Come on now. That's wild. Got an answer there, Andy? Cool. Sounds good. Remember, those of you at home, you're going to want to write this down if you ain't already, because i gotta, I got to freeze that, go write them down myself. So this basilisk, this crazy critter, okay, can I get you all back up here in five, four, three, two? one that'll be uh that'll be five minutes for the texan i don't know about you guys but um i feel like uh the first time that must have happened to a predator they like could you imagine you're like a predator you're walking around and you see this lizard and you're like oh yeah buddy and then you chase it and then it runs over a lake and you're like um what <laughs> excuse me <laughs> yeah yeah. I, w I love to imagine the predator being like, you know what? GG. Well played. Like, that's it. That's okay. Well done. That's it. You, you, did, it. you did it. Or, well, you know, it'd be really, you know, it'd be stink if you're like this big cat and you pounce at it and it runs over there. And as it's running over the lake, a big fish eats it. And you're like, ah. <laughs> hey, enjoy it, Mr. Fish. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. I love, what am I going to do with these to find out how far it can run in 20 seconds? Let's do it. 14 and 3 tenths meters in six and a half seconds. So that would be 143 tenths divided by uh, 13 halves meters per second. And that would be 143 over 10 times 2 over 13. I know those can become 1 and 5. Does 13 go into 143? I think that it does. 11 times? Yeah. I, th I think that they do. I think that it does. 143 divided by 13. Yeah, that reduces to 11 and 1, which turns that into 11 fifths meters per second. Now, what am I going to do with that, Iowa, to find out how far it can go in 20 seconds? Yes, you would. You do 11 fifths meters per second times 20 seconds. The seconds are going to divide out, which gives me, let's see, 11 fifths times 20 over 1. What is that, 4 and 1? Which should be 44 meters. How many of us got 44 meters for that guy? Awesome. Hey, guys, that's all we got for there. So if you guys want to open up your Chromebooks and work on 7.1, that's our self-assessment on unit rate. Just so you know, one of those, uh, most of them don't require that you put the units, but there's two I have to grade manually that you do need units, right? So I need like minutes per ant or something like that on those. So be aware of those. And those are graded manually. Yeah, it's true. That one I'm actually not lying. That's a, that's a true one. But that's what we got for you guys. Thank you so much. Go ahead and work on that 7.1. We got about 10 minutes before we close it up. Thank you so much. And uh, 